He is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. It is Easter Sunday, my dear friends, and as such, I am basing my sermon this morning upon the gospel appointed for today, coming to us from the 20th chapter of the Gospel of St. John, which I will read to you right now. At that time, on the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth, and cometh to Simon Peter, and to the other disciple, whom Jesus loved, and saith unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth, and that other disciple, and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple did outrun Peter, and came first to the sepulcher. And he, stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter, following him, and went into the sepulcher, and seeth the linen clothes lie, and the napkin that was about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulchre, and he saw and believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. My dear friends in our Lord Jesus Christ. As we hear from this 20th chapter, the beginning of the 20th chapter of this gospel according to St. John, St. John tells us that, again, as it was still dark on that third day, St. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb. And as she was approaching the tomb, we are told that she saw that the stone had been moved. And of course, her heart stopped because she, at that point she did not know why the stone was removed, where the body of our Lord was. She had all kinds of questions in her mind. And so in her desperation, she ran back and she sought the apostles. And as such, she found St. Peter and then the apostle whom our Lord loved, which we know as St. John, who again wrote this gospel that we read today. And so St. Peter and St. John, we are told, ran with haste to the tomb. And St. John, being younger, despite the fact that they left together, St. John was younger, and as such, he outran St. Peter. And he got to the tomb first, we're told. And he looked in, but he didn't go in. He waited until St. Peter arrived. And when St. Peter arrived, he went in, and he saw nothing but the linen cloths that had wrapped the body of our blessed Savior when he was taken down from the tomb, or excuse me, from the cross, and laid in the tomb. And likewise, when St. John went in, he saw the same thing. And yet, we're given privy to what was going on in the mind of St. John when he looked. When he looked around the tomb, when he looked at what he saw, because we hear again in verse 8, then went in also that other disciple, meaning St. John, then went in also that other disciple, and he saw and believed. And verse 9 continues. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. 
from these two short verses, dear friend, we are told so much. We are told an immense amount of knowledge. One, when St. John went in, and when he surveyed the empty tomb, and he saw the napkin laying there that had been about our Lord's head, and the cloth that, had, again, as I stated, went around his body, just simply lying there. When he saw those, we are told he saw and believed. It was not based on scripture knowledge. It was not based on what he had read in the scriptures, what he heard from the scriptures. Because this is why it says in verse 9, For as yet they knew not the scripture, that he must rise again from the dead. No, dear friends, he saw and he believed. He saw with his own eyes and he believed in his heart. He saw what he saw with his eyes. And when he saw, he believed that our Lord has risen from the dead in his heart. For he had spent all that time with our blessed Savior. He spent all that time listening to the words he spoke, watching the way that he interacted with those around him seeing with his own eyes the miracles that he performed. And when he gathered all that information together in his heart, he believed. You see, dear friends, it's one thing to have knowledge of the scripture. It's another to live it out. And as human beings, we don't always act perfectly. As human beings, we don't always act the way that we should. And yet, we are still called to be followers and do what we can. St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, verse 23 says, All things are possible to him that believes. If we believe in our hearts, just as St. John did, we know that God will be with us. If we believe in our hearts that God has sent his only son into the world to die for our sins, if we believe in our hearts that Christ, our Lord and Savior, has chosen each and every one of us to be his disciples, to be his followers, if we believe this, then we will follow. We will follow our blessed Savior. And of course, one of the most famous Bible verses, scripture verses, if not the most famous in the entire world, St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We are called to believe in our blessed Savior, dear friends. We are called to believe in God in our hearts. Sometimes the things that we see, we will not want to see. Just as when St. Mary Magdalene ran to the tomb, and she saw the stone roll away. She didn't want to believe it. She didn't want to believe what she saw with her own eyes, and surely she did not understand. Even St. Peter, when he went in, he looked around the empty tomb. He did not understand. And yet, St. John, when he went in the tomb, he saw the empty linens, the napkin lying there, and he knew because he believed, because he believed in his heart. We may not, as I state, always understand. We may not always fully comprehend why things go the way that they do in life. 
that as long as we believe that God sent his son into the world to save us, as long as we believe that God is with us at all times, in good and bad, we know that we cannot go wrong. So this Easter Sunday, dear friends, let us remember to thank God for his gift of eternal salvation, to thank God that he sent his son into the world to save us from our sins, to thank God that he sent his son to die on the cross to save us from our sins, and to thank God that he sent his son into the world to rise from the dead so that you and I could have the possibility of having eternal life with our blessed Savior. God bless you, my dear friends, and God bless your family, your friends, and your loved ones during this upcoming Easter season. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, God bless you one and all.